Fred Smith's groundbreaking idea with FedEx set the stage for the instant reliable communication that defines our world today. Imagine, before FedEx, the idea of sending a package from coast to coast overnight seemed unthinkable. Smith's commitment to fast, predictable deliveries bridged geographic gaps, catalyzing the expectation for rapid, dependable communication in all aspects of our lives. His vision inspired industries to streamline their processes, paving the way for innovations like express mail, just-in-time inventory systems, and eventually the digital communication networks we rely on now. Today, we see that same dedication to speed and reliability in the clicks that send emails in seconds, the apps that connect teams in real time, and the technology that puts knowledge at our fingertips. Much like Smith's reimagined delivery system, modern technology connects people instantly, transforming not just businesses, but entire lives, relationships, and communities. His story is a powerful reminder that the communication systems we often take for granted were born from individuals daring to think differently, transforming big ideas into realities that keep us connected today. Whereupon our young courier invited us to attend the Federal Express open house party on an upcoming Thursday evening in Watsonville, a town a few miles north of us. We're hoping Fred Smith will come, she said. Who's Fred Smith, I asked. Oh, he's the man who started Federal Express, she said, obviously surprised that I didn't know. We've invited him, and I sure hope he's not too busy. Fred Smith, I thought. What an ordinary name for a man who created a whole new world of mail and package delivery. What an astonishing and talented person he must be. I hope he's successful in his family life as he is in his work. Think of the hundreds of thousands, the millions his fertile imagination has served. And to think we didn't even know we needed Federal Express until Fred Smith put his beautiful system to work. Now there are thousands of jobs where before there was only a vacuum. Jobs for pilots and ground personnel, millions of dollars in equipment, and all the cheerful, energetic pickup and delivery people like the happy young woman who serves us. The prosperity radiating from such an enterprise is incalculable. I hope Fred Smith makes it to the Watsonville opening, too. Federal Express is a good example of the positive effects a good idea put into action can bring about. And what a perfect example of creative thinking. Nothing about it contains a new idea except the system of collection and distribution at Memphis, Tennessee. Letter and package delivery is one of the world's oldest businesses. Airmail is as old as aviation. But door-to-door -door overnight airmail from any two points in the country was a new idea whose time had definitely arrived. It was only natural that the Federal Express people would come up with zap mail since rapid communication is their business, office-to-office -office letters in one hour instead of overnight. Well, how about you and what you do? How can creative thinking revolutionize your work? After all, if Fred Smith can do it, work, income, psychic and financial, family. On a scale of one to 10, how do you score each category of your life? How would you score your work on a scale of one to 10? How about income, psychic, and then financial? How would you score those on a scale of 1 to 10? And how about your family life? Well, mine has 10s at every level, I'm happy to say, but of course I've been at it for some time. Let's add creative thinking as our fourth factor. Our list now reads work, income, psychic, financial, family, and creative thinking. I think I can hear someone saying, I'm not much of a creative thinker. You don't have to be much of a creative thinker to come up with one idea. I have a good friend 
with a wonderful family, incidentally, who was in the auto rejuvenation and resale business. He rebuilt automobile engines and in the process got his hands so deeply invaded with grease it was nearly impossible to clean them without at the same time destroying his skin. He began experimenting with various creams that were great skin softeners and conditioners which he and his wife mixed with various cleaning agents. It was his hands they were trying to save, and in the process, they produced a cleansing and skin-protecting product, a wonderful product that has since made them millionaires many times over. The point I'm making here is that his business was rebuilding cars. It brought about a problem, the skin of his hands and forearms. By solving the problem, this man and his wife produced a product that could help hundreds of thousands of other people whose work involved getting their hands deeply soiled. They multiplied their service factor by the hundreds of thousands, just as Fred Smith did, and they've been reaping the bountiful rewards ever since. When someone succeeds, everybody benefits. The entire community and the nation benefit, and in time the whole world can benefit. Think of the countless things that did not exist in the past from which you benefit every day. Each of them was a good idea, and good ideas are free. Implementing them may cost a great deal of money and time and hard work, but it had to start with an idea, not the money. A good idea attracts money. The better the idea, the more money it attracts. Form the habit of using a legal pad and pen. Jot down your ideas, especially those that affect you emotionally, those ideas in which you want to personally become involved. Recently, I received a letter from a woman in New Orleans who for many years has been deeply affected by the community's poor treatment of stray and unwanted pets and domestic animals. She said she had joined the women in the SPCA and had donated funds to the problem, she had picked up strays herself, but felt that her efforts were much too inadequate to do much about what is to her, and millions like her, a pressing national disgrace. One day she got the idea that a television series of the mesh type, as she wrote, centered around the care and protection of animals, would help provide an ongoing crusade of the kind she wanted to bring about. Well, of course, there are no mesh type television programs, MASH was and is unique. It stands alone a marvelous example of excellent writing and acting with a marvelous theme, the absurdity and bloodshed of war. But I knew what she meant, and I agreed with her. I wrote to her that it was now up to her to get some scripts written and get in touch with the right people. An idea with no substance to it, nothing one can hold in his hands and rub against his brains is just that, an idea no more. Its value depends upon its implementation, the part that demands the rolling up of sleeves, the midnight oil, and the perspiration. But that's fun, too, when you're on the track of something big and worthwhile. It takes, as I've outlined earlier, 100% commitment. There is no success without risk. Remember that balancing bar, with success at one end, risk at the other. There's more success lurking in intelligent risk than in all the so-called safe jobs in the world. The world is full of people quite willing to toss out an idea as long as they're not involved in the work or the financial risk. A man wrote to me some years back and said, I have an excellent idea, Mr. Nightingale, if you'd be willing to write the book about it. I told him that if he really had a great idea, the words would come to him and he could write his own book. It's true. When we have something to say, the words are there for us. The person who succeeds in America is the person who sets his or her own wages, goals, and lifestyle. Successful people are those who discover that life is quite ready and willing to meet their requirements. They set their incomes to meet their needs and wants through discovering within themselves a marketable factor and developing that factor to whatever degree necessary in order to derive the appropriate reward response. Unsuccessful people may be said to be those who make their lifestyles fit whatever wages they receive. They put themselves on the receiving end of things and have little to say about their own welfare. 
Successful people put themselves behind the wheel of their lives. The unsuccessful ride in the passenger seats. Almost everything has an economic base today, at least for over half the human population. We're usually rewarded by the amount of money we receive for what we do, and what we do in a free society, and what we charge for what we do in a free society, are largely matters of personal choice. If we find our best interests and opportunities for personal expression within the framework of a large corporation, we can so develop and apply ourselves as to reach whatever levels of accomplishment and reward we're willing to earn. It takes time to succeed, and it should. We need seasoning for the success we decide to achieve. We need to earn our stripes through the daily passage of time and experience. So that each successive step is accepted and applauded by those who have come to know us, meaningful and richly rewarding journeys take time. They take preparation and careful planning. And as every seasoned traveler knows, they're subject to the vagaries of incidents and the mistakes and inefficiencies of others along the way. But if the journey has its adventures and misadventures, it has a definite upward momentum. And there's no doubting its eventual destination, for that is the goal of the person in command. Each new upward step along the way prepares our resolute traveler for the next plateau. And if he or she doesn't lose the exciting vision of the goal to be reached, or meet with an untimely end, the silent tragedy of war and accident, the goal with all the trimmings and more will be his or hers. Remember Cervantes' words. The journey is better than the inn. The journey is our life, our holiday on Earth, our time here, as we successively set new goals, or dive back into our great river of interest, or both. We receive what we fully expect to receive, and usually a good deal more. We become what we think about. We become successful to the extent of our true desires and determination, and we do so by building on our strong point. At what are you best? What gives you the most, the deepest satisfaction? Whatever that is, can be honed to marketable proportions in some way, and applied in service to others to earn you the rewards you seek and should have and will have. And that's your part of the bargain. No one's supposed to do that for you, or hold your hand, or rush to your aid every time you slip or fall back a little. That's the earning part that falls on each of us and prepares each of us for the future. There's help enough on every side if we're wise enough and energetic enough to make use of it. Help in the form of books, recorded cassette programs such as this one, skills to hone. And the numerous people who do come to our aid once we're on course, but such people need not be sought nor importuned. They come of their own natural need, like magic at just the right time. Events begin to fall into our lives like missing pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. They're the mark of the person with the attitude that tells the world he or she knows where he or she is going and fully expects to get there. They approach their commitments with intentionality and delight, as my friend Dr. Charles Garfield puts it in his book and cassette program on peak performers. The late and distinguished Dr. Abraham Maslow put it this way: "If you deliberately plan to be less than you are capable of being, then I warn you that you will be unhappy for the rest of your life. You'll be evading your own capacities." Your own possibilities, and let me add this: if you think you can succeed in a large way and play it safe at the same time, you're sadly mistaken. Success takes risk; it takes full commitment. You go out on the limb, so to speak, and take your chances alone. The warm, comfortable, huddling masses must be left behind, along with the old neighborhood and the small dreams. Risk. And success again are at opposite ends of the same balancing beam. You cannot have one without the corresponding weight of the other. It ups the ante, raises the greens fee, and limits the membership. But it makes playing more fun, and you seldom have to wait in line anymore. 
The late motion picture producer Mike Todd put it well. He said, being broke is a temporary situation. Being poor is a state of mind. Who has success in America or Canada or Mexico or Peru or France or West Germany or Japan or anywhere else? Those who have taken charge of their lives and are directing them to their own best use. Who does not have success? Those persons who have not taken charge of the direction of their lives, but have simply reacted to the environment in which they found themselves. They have simply become a part of it.